are here. So we don't have to go through the booth, right? We can just get scanned because we already I bought mine online already. Yeah. Shit. Imagine getting gored by those claws. That's what happened to Leonardo. <laughs> I know. Like the leopard fish, leopard fish. What kind of bear is this? North American grizzly. Yeah, it's a very common bear. But don't forget to go see Mama Bear. I'll be at the gate. She is on the other small. side of the research. Bears? Yeah. Oh, really? They're not relative to the other ones. Not that big. Do they ever have different markings? Like their eyes will always be black? Yeah. Oh, look at his ears. It's a little puff ball. I know. So cool. Honestly? I love the way they look. Look at that. Look at that. Sitting here in front of Africa Rocks, there's an Animal Encounters event that is starting soon. So we'll see if they bring out any really cool ambassador animals. And then still a lot to see. So the day started off really gloomy, but the sun is starting to come out which makes me so happy i'm actually warm so i have been okay and i've been having a good time we saw pandas up close snow leopard was really pretty and we're gonna go see more of the african animals i really want to see tigers later for sure i love tigers and then polar bears giraffes elephants kangaroos maybe maybe but i think the show is gonna start soon and this is a servo very good yes the more common guess we get for this kind of animal is actually a juvenile cheetah, which is very understandable. They have a lot of the same characteristics as cheetahs, but the truth is, as a species, circles are actually older than cheetahs are. They don't need a cheetah right here. Their noses are huge. What? Their noses are huge. That's all. It must be like chef. <laughs> yeah, but why? Why are they doing this? <laughs> Wow, their freaking necks are so agile. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? Are they dueling? <laughs> Turned off the audio signal, so did not know it started recording, but I have been home for several hours. So basically after we finished the zoo, we went to get some gelato because he was talking about it yesterday. He went to La Jolla to get some. And I do admit I haven't had gelato in a very long time. So I was really tempted to try some. So we got some in downtown area, which is an area I never go to. And then we came home and I immediately took a nap because since Last week, end of last week, I really just feel like I haven't been getting enough sleep. So yesterday, he said he wanted to go to the zoo early, near opening, which is 9 a.m. So I was like, man, fuck. So I slept at like 1, and I still woke up tired, but still needed a little bit more energy. Yeah, sorry, go to chess. Always queuing nonstop. But anyways, the zoo was actually... It was pretty nice. So one main thing that I remembered about the zoo compared to last time I went, um, last time I went was with Shane and it was about two years ago. So what I remember is when I went to the zoo last time, I was just starting off vlogging. So I was still using my phone on 4K, my old Pixel. And I just remembered that once I got this camera, the quality is so different and I'm so happy that I got to get some video of today because I just know it's so much better than last time. Um, we saw, I'd say we pretty much saw a large part of the zoo, maybe nearly all of it. There were a few animals we didn't see like gorillas. I think the good thing about today is our pace for how we wanted to see the animals were pretty much on par with each other. So. None of us wanted to really hang out at a certain area and watch an animal for a very long time. We kind of just 
glanced, saw the animal where it was, and maybe I got a little bit of a recording or pictures, and then we just moved along. Overall, I'd say today was pretty decent. It was cloudy and very dreary for most of today. Um, it did have some sunshine eventually, which was great. I need to put this down really quick. Wait, I am a robot. Yeah, just kidding. I actually decided to return my motorcycle leather jacket because it's just not the right size for me, definitely not. And it's not worth keeping such an expensive item like that with that type of feeling. Like when I got it in the mail, I wasn't that excited when I wore it and you really need to be for a $500 product. So I'm going to be trying out other jackets from Alpine Stars. I'd say the main problem about a lot of these jackets is that when I order them online, I have to pay for return shipping. So I'm gonna try to ship out my jacket tomorrow. I don't know how much it's gonna cost. It's about, I guess like five to eight pounds and the box is really large. So I expect it to be expensive, but there are a few jackets that I have seen that I'm interested in. I, will, I think I wanna try for a non sports kind of look. The jacket that I ordered has, you know, like the logo on the side and has like different cuts of color, but I might just focus more on a leather jacket that looks more like a leather jacket and kind of fashionable. And Alpine Stars makes jackets like that for women. But yeah, um, unfortunately I went to a motorcycle gear store yesterday after work and they just have no selection for females because he said that females make up 10% of their customers, so it doesn't make sense for them to have much in store. That just makes me sad because it would be so much easier if I could go to a store and just try them on, right? And have that sort of outlet for seeing the product instead of only needing to order online. Riding can be so unfair for females. It's Saturday and I haven't recorded in a few days, mainly because I guess if I'm just hanging around the house with my brother, I didn't feel like I wanted to record, mainly because I feel like maybe some of what I wanted to talk about, maybe I didn't want to say it in front of him, uh, but I wanted to kind of recount a little bit about his trip because I had a lot to think about this past week and um, some of it wasn't the greatest, but he arrived last Friday and he stayed until Friday morning, so basically a whole week. And I talked about it in a previous video that I was anxious about his arrival because he had really bad habits that I knew of from our childhood or being a teenager or times I would stay at his apartment in New York. It was just really, really messy and just a living situation that I'm not really fond of, so I kind of got the feeling that when he came here, he would do the same stuff because he has that type of personality where he just doesn't seem that considerate. I, I don't want to try to analyze too much about what they might be thinking because I did that the entire week and it still confuses me a lot. So just in general, um, I like things cleaner and I feel like eventually after you ask someone multiple times, can you do this please? And they don't do it, you just feel like it's pointless, right? So even though I really don't like just lying down and being submissive, um, I also did not want to keep asking and feel like it was pointless. So there were times like that, that really, really frustrated me. There was a noise issue on the first night back from Joshua Tree and that definitely pissed me off. But I will say that a lot of my frustration definitely stemmed from me not being used to living with someone. But also I do think he would be a terrible living partner for someone like me. I would, I'll definitely admit I'm not super clean. I leave dishes in the sink for multiple days, but I also think that certain behaviors of mine are the way they are because I live by myself. So if I did live with someone, I probably would not leave dishes unwashed in the sink for very long because it could affect them if they don't like it and it's not the cleanest, right? So I do have behaviors like that that are not super clean, but certain stuff like, well, I'm not gonna list off all the things I had complaints with, but I'll just say that yes, living with him was very frustrating for me 
and it just doesn't work out for us. Um, I did enjoy spending time with him, but I had trouble balancing between my frustration and being unhappy with our living situation and enjoying his company while being out because this is something that I think is um, a fault of mine because it has been prevalent in relationships in the past, but I recognize that if I'm angry with someone, like after I argue with someone and I'm unhappy with them, it's kind of hard for me to be platonic and friendly with them you know, later on when you just want to just interact normally together. I think it really differs also because it really depends on whether the other party shows effort, maybe, in resolving the problem or argument you have. And I also think I have a bad track record of coming across people who don't put in that effort or people who aren't mature or people who don't really try to resolve it and they just care more about being right. These are kind of things that I think about from time to time because I do feel like I have grown a lot since my last relationship. So it makes me wonder what a relationship would be like if I found someone who was really, really considerate, someone who puts themselves in your shoes. Because I know I hear that phrase all the time, but as I encounter more people, or even my family, I realized that they never think about the other person's perspective. And that really disappoints me at times because sometimes I just feel like my requests aren't that hard to fulfill. Maybe I'm just unlucky with the type of people I come across and that contributes to me having a low opinion of people when it comes to being considerate. Like for example, I think right now, if someone else were to ask to stay at my house, I would actually lay down a few ground rules or ask them some questions ahead of time to make sure that they know what I expect because it does make me really unhappy if I have someone come into my space and live with me and it's a favor for them, right? They're saving a lot of money by doing that. But if they affect my life negatively, then I would not want to help them in that way because that's just not who I am. I'm sorry, I cannot put someone else's happiness or um, do me a favor for them at the expense of my happiness. It was a rough week, but I guess something that was interesting that I talked about in my last video is that my brother really likes auto chess. I don't know if he's going to play it much when he gets home because he spent a lot of money on World of Tanks, so him not playing that is kind of wasting that money, but we basically played it together every night he was here and he got the hang of it really quickly. He already won first place a few times. I want to make sure this weekend I rejuvenate <laughs> because I only have two days of work next week before I go to New Mexico. There are a few things I still kind of want to plan out. Um, I definitely want to see if I can plan out what I'm going to do per day while I'm there because it kind of sucks doing it when I don't have my computer in front of me. I could do it on my phone, but I hate browsing on my phone. But what I have also decided is that I think I'm going to I'm going to leave Milo at Shane's house because I kind of wanted to leave Sammy at my house and I didn't originally plan for someone to come scoop their shit or deal with the food because I have an automatic feeder. But if I have two cats here, their shitter is gonna be so disgusting within a couple days that I just did not want to deal with that. So the good thing is that Shane's cat and Milo get along and they seemed friendly. That's what he said when he was at home working and seeing them play together. So that's good. Um, I didn't want to drop off Sammy also because Sammy and his cat don't get along. And Shane's cat is also old and experiencing some issues um, internally. So I really just, that would be awful of me to drop Sammy off because I think when I was living with him for a month, um, our cats were really not getting along and his cat was starting to experience some problems. So Sammy will be staying here, Milo goes to Shane's house, and I will also be bringing my, my plants to Shane's house because that's another living thing that I kind of forgot that I will need someone to help take care of while I'm away. So 
Tuesday night, I'll drop off Milo at his house and uh, I, I forgot that her frozen food, I only have a week, a little bit more than a week's worth left of it and it takes a couple days, like I kind of have to plan out when I want to receive my food because if no one's here while I'm gone, it's just gonna rot and that's a lot of money wasted. So I asked Shane to come here next Friday to help me put it in the freezer. I would pay him, of course, because I still feel like our houses are maybe like 15 to 20 minutes away, but it's still, it's still a bit of a drive. It's not like as close as last year. So he will help me do that. And then I just asked him to just help me please pick up Sammy's shit because that would be the third day of me being gone and Sammy definitely would have shit and I don't want it to be disgusting by the time I get back. So those are my plans. I think I'll take Riley fetching. And I also want to go for a joyride. I haven't recorded yet a joyride. I've recorded going to work, but that's not really exciting to me. Definitely not exciting. So I will do that later. Hi, I am back from my ride three hours roughly and now the first thing I wanted to do when I got home was to spin because my entire body is generally pretty cold um, today was not the warmest day to go riding it was also extremely windy on Mount Laguna so that was actually really really unpleasant because I had to take my turn slower than usual because I noticed that the wind was like pushing me towards the sides and that's actually really dangerous when I'm trying to lean. I was recording on my GoPro in 4K 30 FPS, which is matching settings as my camera right now. And it turns out that it was able to record roughly an hour, 10 minutes. My riding location probably helped my GoPro significantly because it was probably getting really hot and because of the wind and the temperature being like maybe 50 degrees outside, um, it was helping to keep it cool so it could last longer, that's what I'm assuming. But the battery was at 100% and it drained to 13% in that amount of time. So I was a little concerned it would be much shorter than that. So an hour is still pretty decent, I would say. What I was actually thinking about for my riding footage is maybe doing some sort of ride and chat video because I feel a little weird about speeding up my ride to make it super fast. I don't really know what someone would get out of me showing my ride fast, not in real time. So the thing about that is I don't know what I would talk about, but that's the thing about chatting videos. I think I would just talk about whatever the fuck I talk about, um, maybe deeper stuff than what I'm doing with my life because I think about that stuff all the time and I think it would probably be appropriate for a ride and chat video where people can enjoy seeing the views that I had and then can listen to whatever thoughts I have. So I don't know if that's a good idea, but I'll try to think of some topics that I have been uh, thinking about lately and stuff that people might find interesting. So I am going to probably end this here because I want to focus on my spinning. This might be the only exercise that I do for today, it really depends if I feel like it later, but as long as I get this in, I'll be pretty happy. And there's some smash on that I'm watching, so I will get back to it. I hope everyone is having a delightful Saturday.